What is your name and when were you born? Barbara Ann Wrestler Weeks. And I was born November 14th, 1929. Where did you grow up as a child? On Long Island in a little uh, commuter town, Huntington. And uh, it was a very, very nice growing up, even though it was the uh, Depression. Um, my dad did have a good uh, job, and uh, I was well cared for, but we did have a lot of relatives who were very poor. I even remember the smell of poor going to visit them, you know, interesting. Can you tell us a little bit about your parents? Well, Mom and Dad had met on the trolley because this was a town that, uh, as I say, was a commuter town. And so Mama worked for a bank, and so she commuted into New York, and Daddy was working at that time for an ink company, I think. And uh, so they met on the trolley car going from the turnpike, which is the main thoroughfare from uh, New York out east on Long Island. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us about any of your siblings? I had them. No siblings. I, I always wanted a brother or a sister or something. And Mama was horrified once when she heard me telling the children, my friends in the neighborhood, that that she was pregnant. She was, and she, and she wasn't. <laughs> so, did you have family that were in the area? Yes, I had um, a grand, my grandparents and an aunt, and uh, in fact, my grandparents had one of the only automobiles in our hometown at that time, yeah. And um, my aunt taught high school and, um, and uh, in one of the high schools. My great-grandfather had actually been the contractor to build a high school, yeah, yeah. It was interesting, I just absolutely loved my Aunt Florence. She got me through so much, pro so many problems. And growing up, she taught me how to think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, then the next question was, who was your role model as a child? Would that be your aunt, or was there somebody else? Oh, let me think. Now, she was pretty important. I guess maybe she was a pretty strong role model. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, where were you during Pearl Harbor? Uh, we were sitting at the dining room table having Sunday dinner, and the bells started to ring, and Daddy turned on the the uh, the radio, and uh, and then we learned what had happened. But even before that, I remember as a small child hanging onto his hands on Main Street and seeing big trucks of, of junk iron going down Main Street toward from uh, wherever it was. And Daddy said, that's going to come back at us. They were taking it to Japan. And at that time, he said, that's going to come back at us with bombs. So, you know, there was the thought that someday this was not going to be good. <laughs> but at that time, we would have known about uh, Hitler's bombing of England, mm -hmm. the, the Blitz. Okay. Yeah, so we, uh, we were all aware of that. And of course, there was no uh, television, but at that time there was March of Time on uh, the uh, movies okay. on the weekends. Okay. And the, the movies were a big source of information for us. 
So how often would you would you go to the movies? When Almost you every week. Every week. Yeah, mm -hmm. on Saturday or Sunday. Okay. Yeah. And one reason, of course, was in the summer. That was the only place it was air conditioned. <laughs> But it was a source of information. Uh, well, of course, uh, my father had been in the First World War and in the Navy, and he never got out of the Brooklyn Navy Yard, which, because he felt the government with a German name, he felt they didn't trust him. And that was, it really hurt. I think it hurt his feelings more than anything. But anyway, so during the Second World War, he wanted to join, and of course he was too old at that point. And so he, he was a member of the American Legion. Are you familiar with that? And he was chaplain. He contacted all kinds of people. There was one man who had a lovely estate on Long Island. Uh, Let's see, what was his name? I think he was Secretary of War. And so he gave Daddy access to all of his, his files. And Daddy spent every evening and every weekend working on a complete, I mean, it's absolutely, a, 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 a microfilm of it out here at the university of his cards that he had. He, and it was absolutely complete. And he wanted to have some, uh, some way of the community remembering the Gold Star Battalion, those who had died. And, and that, that memorial is still there. It's a beach where my boys have learned to swim in years past, you know, in Huntington Harbor. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Did you attend college or university when you got older? Yeah, uh, that was when my parents sold their home so that I could go. Daddy knew that it was going to be so much for five years, it would be $10,000 for me to go to college. And they sold their home and and lived in the neighbor's uh, attic. So the first um, time I came home from college, I did my term paper on a typewriter <laughs> in this little attic. <laughs> they were wonderful parents. Yeah, they sacrificed yeah. so much. Everything, yeah. yeah. Can you tell us about your first job? Oh, let's see, my first job would have been with Al Gracer, who was an architect in my hometown. Well, actually, that wouldn't have been my first. My first job was as a secretary, and I was terrible, for my Sunday school teacher when his, when his, his secretary was on vacation. <laughs> oh, he was a sweet man. <laughs> So what did you do for the architect when you started? Oh, I uh, drew lines and designed and uh, worked on working drawings. You know, you, in those days it was all done with pencil and paper, T-square and triangle. Uh, now it's all CAD, computer assisted drafting. But 10 years ago I went back to my college reunion 50th reunion, and it was so wonderful for me. I was the only woman who came back at that time. Actually, I never graduated, but uh, I did practice because I had this wonderful husband <laughs> who was patient enough to, uh, to put up with my doings. We didn't always agree either on business or design. And so you mentioned that you and your husband worked together. Can you tell us how you met each other? Oh, yes. We met first, I think, at the Christian Science Church, but I didn't really meet him at that time. Um, 
it was a big church then in Syracuse, and um, I walked down to go to Sunday school. Actually, I wasn't old enough. Well, I would have been old enough for church, but I went to Sunday school, and then uh, we met in the drafting room at the university. Cause he was several years older than I. I see the his uh, uh, veteran of the battle of, of the balls and the log and yeah, and so he was on uh, on the uh, on the GI Bill, okay. and that's when my parents were paying for my. I wasn't smart enough, honestly. I tried to get into Cornell, and they wouldn't take me. I didn't have high enough grades in high school. I was just so grateful to be there, whatever. <laughs> Anyhow, um, we then met. There was a Tuesday evening testimonial meeting in the chapel at Syracuse, and we met there and eventually uh, started dating. Okay. And it was probably through that. But Mama told me later that she had seen Roger in the lobby of the, of the, the a church. And she said, oh, he's the man for my daughter. <laughs> wow. yeah. yeah. So did you all have children? Three boys. Well, what makes you proud of your children? Well, they're all individuals. Now, Jim, the oldest, is an engineer. He's a, a civil engineer. And, um, and he's a real bridge maker between people, not only building the bridge out here but, and other bridges all over, but he's wonderful with people. And um, Bridging people together, you know, and uh, and then Tyler, the next youngest, who's here someplace in the apartment, is the artist musician, and he's the one who has a degree from Little Creek, in uh, in uh, Virginia Beach. Yeah, you know, it's the it's the Army and Navy music school. And he still plays his trombone and a lot of tennis. And my baby, Peter, he's uh, retired from the Navy. He was uh, uh, a submariner. Yeah, I, I think I have some pictures of, of him and my husband and me when we were on a uh, dependence cruise oh, wow. out of uh, of Honolulu. out of Honolulu. You've been on those? Oh yeah. no. <laughs> you would like to have been. That was like a one day yeah. thing. That was too much. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was under the Pacific, of course, oh, and I didn't realize it at the time, <laughs> but I was sitting in the captain's chair sketching everybody <laughs> on the boat. <laughs> are the most important things to you now? Getting up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, being available. You know, and my husband passed on. It was very quick, and I'm grateful for that. And so that's, that's where I am now, and I'm just so grateful for every day. And, uh, and I say, said, something about uh, be, being grateful for the technology and all the sciences and how the science of Christianity has taught us how to think from a basic principle. You know, in science, in Christian science, uh, Mrs. Eddy has written this wonderful book and uh, in it is a, 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 a chapter called the Glossary and it has wonderful definitions in the first. Of course, the first is a definition of God giving seven synonyms, divine principle, 
which you don't find in the Bible. But there was a philosopher in the 1600s, his name was Petrus Peter Ramus, and he used principle as a synonym for God. And that includes divine life, divine truth, divine love, divine spirit, divine soul, divine mind. And we reflect all those. They're all available. So when did you start getting interested in art? Oh, I started drawing when I was three years old. Uh, I was drawing in the dirt <laughs> in the backyard of, of Aunt of Ella's house. My, my grandmother and my aunts and cousins would get together for coffee club, coffee club once a month. And it was about Easter time and they had little baby chicks running around. And I smoothed out the dirt and picked up a stick and started drawing baby chicks. <laughs> and when my family came out from their coffee clutch and chatting, oh, they looked at my, my artwork and said, oh, she's gonna be an artist. My other grandmother was an artist. She had been divorced before my father was born. Uh, my grandfather didn't even realize they'd been married a very short time. Anyway, uh, that's another long story. <laughs> you don't get into all that. But he was a wonderful man. I finally met him when I was about three. What advice would you give for the youth of today? Well, you know, it, it's interesting you should ask because last two, two Mondays ago, we had this affair at Lucy's, the little restaurant. Well, the photographer's daughter and son, this was a Ballinger publishing event. Um, the little girl, I was do, doing sketches of two of my great-grandsons, and then I did a sketch of this little girl, who must have been about 14. And I asked her what she wanted to be. Well, she wanted to be a dancer and a singer, and we had a lovely chat about theatrics. And, and, and then she said, oh, would you draw my brother? Well, he appeared with long hair, a very serious face. I think he must have been about nine or ten. And so as I'm sketching him with this long hair, I mean, not just shoulder, I remember really long. Uh, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, I want to be a scientist. I said, well, then you've got to think like a scientist. And that's when I told him about being a scientist. You base your research and your thinking on a principle, whether it's a mathematical principle or a biological principle or a, a chemical principle, and then you expect a good result. Expect to have a positive result, good result. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.